Deputy Secretary of State advises Granite Staters to return absentee ballots as soon as possible. Previous record for absentee ballots cast already shattered. Voters are casting absentee ballots in record numbers ahead of the November 3rd election. But the Secretary of State's office says time is running short for those who want to send in their ballots by mail. Deputy Secretary of State David Scanlon said on Friday his office officially cautions that 14 days should be allowed to make sure the absentee ballot arrive on time through the mail, which would mean that ballots now should be hand-delivered. My experience is that the mail is moving faster than that, he said. But I'd say if you get within a week of the election, you might want to consider dropping it off in person at the clerk's office, Scanlon said. Scanlon said officials of the U.S. Postal Service has told him that they intend to take special measures to make sure that any ballots that are in transit as we get close to the election will be delivered on time. People can request an absentee ballot until 5 p.m. the day before the election, Scanlon said. The important thing is that if they know they are going to vote absentee, they should get them in as quickly as they can. If they intend to return the ballots by mail, they should get them in the mail right away. Ballots must be received by the local election officials by 5 p.m. on Election Day, November 3rd, in order to be counted. People can drop off their absentee ballots at their city or town clerk's office until Election Day, Scanlon said. On Election Day, the ballots must still be delivered to the clerks, but Scanlon said that on that day, a clerk may be at his or her office or may be at the polling place. Scanlon suggested people check in advance with their clerk's office to ensure that those who wait until election day properly deliver their ballots to the right place. Due to COVID-19 pandemic earlier this year, the requirements for voting absentee were relaxed by state officials to allow people to cite a health concern about the virus as an acceptable reason to vote absentee. The change prompted a huge increase in the number of absentee ballots cast in the state primary election on September 8th. And the same is happening in the upcoming general election. According to the Secretary of State's office, as of Tuesday of this week, 200,834 requests for absentee ballots had been made to city and town clerks, and 136,137 ballots have been returned completed. The number of returned ballots is by far a record. The previous high came in the 2016 general election when 75,305 absentee ballots were cast. That was nearly 10% of the 75,000 755,850 total votes cast in that election. In the September primary this year, about 
30% of the total votes cast were by absentee. Scanlon said the trend for the general election appears to be minoring the primary and he expects about 30% of the ballots cast to be absentee. He said his office is not yet ready to predict the total turnout for November 3rd. There are now about 1 million registered voters in the state according to the latest registration numbers reported by Secretary of State's office this week. Scanlon said no major problems are expected in the absentee voting process or the in-person voting process. At the polling places, Scanlon said the lines may look longer because of social distancing, but he expects that they will move just as fast as in any normal election. There may be minor delays, but we expect things to move along, and we don't expect that people will have to stand in line for hours, such as we're seeing in other parts of the country. To move the process more quickly, clerks can open the outer envelopes of the absentee ballots and begin pre-screening beginning next Thursday, as well as on Friday in the following Monday. In the past, pre-screening could not begin until the day of the election, Scanlon said. And that does it for this news report right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.